You're crazy. Hey! There was another school shooting and it seems to be happening way too often now. We can't live life in fear. Her hair is completely frozen. Whoa. That is crazy. Hey, sous vide right there and we have our Rubbermaid tote full of water and ribs and we're gonna see how well this thing cooks these ribs. My brother-in-law said we need at least 12 hours. Look at the winter storm that we're having. It's beautiful isn't it? Dropping new snow by the time we wake up in the morning here in just a flash we might have like six inches or five inches or maybe three inches. Whatever the case let's see. Whoa Gigo! Did you see outside? What is it? Whoa! So much snow. You see all that snow? It's beautiful and freezing and wonderful all at the same time. Woo! You're crazy. Woo! Don't you dare, Canyon! No! This is so cold, I'm going back in! Come on, Gigo! You crazy girl! We made sure to put these in so they could start cooking like 10 hours ago and I never pushed the play button! I can't believe I did that. This hasn't even been doing anything but soaking in water all night long. <laughs> not getting warm, not cooking, not anything. Go out back. Go out Go with out the back. dogs. The front is all wet. Go out with the dogs. Okay. Come on. Oh, he's gonna towel. <laughs> oh, you're drying your face? Oh, oh good, good job. job, buddy. Good job. Okay, good job. Are you going out with the dogs? Okay, here you go. Are you cold? I'm cold. You're cold? Mm -hmm. Is that better? You got all the bubbles? Mommy, it's like he's in a cloud. Yeah, it is like he's in a cloud, huh? I remember at my foods class last year, we made eggs by putting them in a bag and putting it in boiling hot water. So I want to try something. So 
why I put the egg yolk in a separate bag from this, from the whites. Because I'm allergic to egg yolk, so it gives me like some red stomach aches. So I cooked the eggs, the egg yolk separate and then gave it to the dogs. Water is almost to the desired temperature. It's 101.6 degrees and we're trying to get to 165 degrees. And this bin is like so hot. It's crazy how this thing works. Looks like they're getting cooked though. Tell you to fill that back up? No. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm filling it up. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Ooh. Gigo? I need some of that. Are you on a are you on a date, Gigo? Oh, did she take it from you? You're up there? Oh, there's the Gigo. <laughs> so we've had the sous vide on for about 10 hours with the ribs in there and that's not enough time. So Johnny thinks it can stay in there and I think you said that TR said it could be for like 36 hours. So if we have had it on for 10 hours and we leave it until tomorrow night dinner at five, is that still gonna be okay with those ribs? Yes, the sous vide, the beauty of the sous vide, TR has told me over and over again, is that you can leave it there indefinitely as long as you want. It'll just break down, it'll be more For a tender. thousand years? Um, <laughs> they probably won't stay on the bone very well. <laughs> But um, yeah, you can leave it in there as long as you want without there being like the risk of bacteria or foodborne whatever um, because it's keeping it at a safe temperature. So, so yeah, you can leave it in as long as you want. <laughs> It'll just, just the longer you leave it on, the more connective tissue is gonna break down and the more they're gonna just fall apart. What is going on? What? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> you broke my hanger! And then you throw it at me? You have to say sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. No, better be sorry. You better give me a. <laughs> mommy, <you're right>. <laughs> 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 So something I was thinking about today, and maybe we should talk to the kids about it. Um, something we've never actually talked about on our channel before, except for in the very beginning. I've um, been going through comments a lot more lately and just kind of seeing what's going on. And it's interesting when, when bad things happen in the news, all of a sudden negative comments start happening on everybody's videos. And, and I think it's something we need to talk about. like. Guys, are you scared? Like, are you are you in fear of what's gonna happen? Are you in fear? Are you scared to go to school? Are you scared of those different things? Maybe we should talk to our kids about it, Sarah. I think we need to talk to them about um, okay. how I they don't, feel about things. I don't even know if they know what happened. So, me and mommy were talking earlier, and we have a question for all of you. Maybe not you. <laughs> there has been some a ton on social media. I'm sure you guys have seen it or heard about it talk about what the country needs to do, what people need to do, what blah, 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 blah needs yeah. to do. In fact, I, honestly, I'm quite tired of it. 
about all these people and their opinions about what needs to happen, but you guys are aware of a shooting that happened at a school, right? You guys hear about the Florida school shooting? Oh, wait, yeah. Everybody's aware of it? No. Mm -mm. So Lizzie and Savannah are not aware of it. I'm and, not aware. Okay, and Az is not aware. So there was another school shooting, and it seems to be happening way too often now. In fact, it is happening way too often now where um, a crazy person goes into a school and kills people, kills students. And so the reason why I wanted to talk with you guys about it, and maybe this is more for Ali and Danielle, is does that scare you at all? Or how, what are your feelings on that? It's yeah, it scares me that I'm at home most of the time. It scares me, but it makes me feel a little better that I'm not at school most of the time and I'm at home most of the time. Scary. How about you, Ali? Um, doesn't really affect me all that much. I feel sad for the people that are hurt, but I'm not really scared for it or about it. How about you, Sarah? Anytime you let your children go out in public and you're not with them, I know it's something that I can't be with them all the time once they get to a certain age. I just can't always be with them. But yes, anytime you send them out into public and let other people take care of your children, it can always be a scary situation. And then hearing about school shootings, it's always scary. And it breaks my heart that these people have to deal with it. I'm scared about it. Very scared. <laughs> you are scared about it? You think it could happen at your school? Um, not really because I've heard like Utah is like a safer place. I don't know if that's fully true. It feels safer. I think the uh, principal at your school does a really good job and I think that the teachers do a really good job. But there's really nothing we can do about it if something like this happens. Obviously, there's a lot of things that we can do to, to if we hear shooting or something happening, we hurry and hide, you know, in the, in the classroom or hide somewhere quickly, right? <laughs> but in terms of stopping it from happening, can we stop it from happening? The answer is no, we can't, unfortunately. Everybody wants to, to hurry and make a quick answer right now. They want to blame the president. They want to blame guns. They want to blame all these different things. But the reality is, is there are people that are hurting all around us. And unfortunately, as we've seen with the suicide rate, people want out. <laughs> And sometimes they want to take other people out first. So we're not telling you these things to make you scared. We're telling you these things so you know what's happening and you can be aware of what is going on around you. And the other thing is, is like if we were to go to Hawaii right now, right? Um, and I know this is completely different, but if we were to go to Hawaii right now and there was a huge massive um, earthquake out in the ocean and there was a tsunami, could we do anything about that? You also can't do anything about what people do. We go get in our car, can we do anything about somebody getting in their car that has been drinking and driving? Can we do anything about them hitting us broadside? We just have to live our life. So I guess the biggest message that we wanna give you kids and as, as well as you is we can't live life in fear. We have to do everything we can in our own power and, and reach our own potential ourselves and not rely on government, not rely on kings and queens and, and princesses and not rely on the internet and not rely on all these things that we think are gonna save our life or make our life better. We need to make our life better. We need to make things go better. And unfortunately, these kind of things just happen. It's just, it's supposed to happen actually. And we, we believe that when we read the scriptures and we read the Bible that um, the last days, like it, it has already been told that bad things are going to happen. And these are bad, terrible things. And so to the families, if any of you watch that have families, members, or friends that were lost in that, our hearts go out to you, and, and we're not trying to make light of that at all. This is not something... No, it was a horrible, horrible thing. It's more than horrible. It's, it's, I wish I could be there at the funeral. I wish I could hear about the amazing lives that these kids were living, and they were, and they, and they got, that got taken away from them. And now their parents, their siblings, and all these family members are hurt. They're, they're broken forever. They're, they're broken because of this, and, and they don't have answers, and... They want answers and they're doing everything they can to change the laws and the situations and I'm saying go for it. Do everything you possibly can in your power because you have power because you have that so close to you. Um, we can't sit around and say that, that we know what it feels like because we don't. So don't get me wrong there. I'm trying to just help our kids and help you understand that we need to be encouraged by what our what we can do and who we are, right? So Danielle. If you see somebody that's hurting, could potentially do something of harm to people, what do you do about it? I'd probably spend more time with them and like 
help them figure out what's going on with them and like how they can feel better about themselves instead of like taking it up with other people or themselves. So I guess what we're trying to say more than anything else is that we really hope and wish and desire that people, you, me, everybody here, everybody out there can recognize their worth. Um, we realize that people aren't perfect. We realize that you're gonna have your bad days, you're gonna have your bad months, and it's and you're gonna have those times where it's just like, I, I can't do it anymore, I'm done, I, I just can't. One of the things you need to realize, and we have to try to tell ourselves on a regular basis as, what do we have to tell ourselves? We are worth it. We are worth it, right? We. We are going to have bad times because we have to. We have to. It is actually necessary for us to go through hard times. Why? Because it helps us become stronger. I know it doesn't feel like it. I know it feels like the end. But I want you to do this really quick. Look back at a time where you, just look back really quick at a time where it was difficult for you. A time that was tough, a time that was hard. And tell me you didn't learn something from that. Tell yourself, did I learn something from that? And then realize that the time that you're going through right now that might be difficult, you're gonna learn from it and you're gonna come out better. You're gonna come out stronger than you were before. And uh, and again, like if you see people that are hurting, if you see people that need your help, the first thing to do is not what your first thought is, which is, oh, maybe I should just stay away from them or maybe I should just be mean to them. Sometimes that happens. What should we do? Tell them um, I know. What? Tell them that they are worth it. I know, that sounds so simple. What we should do is work hard to try to figure out how we help them understand their worth, right? So, can we not have fear over going to school, guys? Mm -hmm. Can we have confidence mm -hmm. that we're gonna go to school and things are good? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you guys are good. I, I was hoping this conversation wouldn't be, all of a sudden, we have one of our kids that's really, really scared and we don't know what to do. Danielle, you said you're a little bit scared, but you're happy you're only going to a couple classes. Like, yeah. what are we gonna do about that fear? What are we gonna do about that being scared? It's Forget not like it. super, super like freaked out. It's just like, that'd be pretty scary if that happened. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. You guys have to remember too, there are so many good people at your schools that love you and will do everything in their power to take care of you. And what we need to do about fear is we need to talk about it. Fear is real. It's not Wait. something that is not real. Oh, it's, yeah. It's and I'm real. also really, I also feel prepared because we've been doing lockout drills, uh, drills at our school, so. I feel prepared more than scared. Good for you. That's... Turn off the light, lock the door, and then just sit on the ride. Whoa, that sounds like your teacher just wants a quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> that no. sounds like fun. Should we do that right now? No, yes. that is where like you're like. I know. In your I, I, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I know what it's like. We as a family. Number one, we wanted to talk about this, but we wanted to put it on camera because it's important to us, and we needed to find out if our kids were scared about this whole thing and. Fear is real, it's okay to be scared a little bit, but the thing you need to realize is there's so many good people and such good stuff happening around us. Let's not focus on the bad. Let's do our best to focus on the good. And as always guys, we love you and we're thankful for you. And um, if you're scared, again, do your very best to look at all the positive, all the, all the good stuff that's happening around you. All right guys, we love you and... You are worth it! I want to do one it turn. Like it's done. 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 Hey, Vagan is here. <laughs> Why is she outside? What is going on? Holy cow, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. Is your hair frozen? Your uh, hair is <laughs> Let's frozen. <see>. It's frozen. <laughs> Let me see. Your hair is totally frozen. Your hair is frozen. Look at this. Her hair is completely frozen. Whoa. That is crazy. It looks like I have a bunch of twigs in my hand. And I can't feel my anything on my face. All right, you better go to bed. And I love you. Love you. <laughs> Look at that. It has crystals. Let me see here. Wow. Why'd you do that again? Because you told me to. Because <laughs> <laughs> I told you to? Yeah. Came inside after getting polar. Uh -huh. And I was like, my hair is like a little bunch of little daggers in my head. And uh -huh. you're like, hey, you go back outside, make your hair freeze all the way through. Yeah, and guess what she did? And I hate snow and so, cold. So why'd you do it again? It was pretty much a dare. So it I was a dare. It. That's what it was. That's what it was. Oh, you got to hold over the heater vent. That's yeah. a good idea. <laughs>